Consumers are becoming more and more conscientious of recycling efforts, but if you think about it, recycling is not new to gardeners. Think about how many ways we can recycle old water hoses and nylon stockings and gallon milk jugs right in the garden. And I want to show you some other ways that you might want to think about recycling and also some uh, safety sanitation type things. Now with us, we use a lot of the drip irrigation, which you'll see one of our main header lines here. And when those get worn out or we get holes in them, what we've come up with is Alan will devise where we can just use them as hoops by putting them on a rebar on each end here. And it makes a nice hoop for our uh, ro floating row covers. Now also the floating row covers are another thing that we've figured out a way to use bits and pieces of them to recycle because they'll last several years but from time to time you'll start getting frayed pieces and you can take those frayed pieces and use the small parts and actually put them in containers and kind of plug up the holes a little bit so the soil doesn't wash out when you pot up new plants and it still allows moisture to come out of there. Now I've also heard people use uh, old buttons that have come off clothing and stick in that area. The water will still drain through the holes. Uh, newspaper, there's all kinds of things that you can use to kind of plug up those holes where the soil doesn't come out but still allow moisture or drainage to come out. Now from time to time we'll also break the uh, clay pots around here and instead of throwing them away we'll break them up in smaller pieces and some of the containers you can use those to put in the bottom to allow a little bit more drainage, especially in containers that do not have holes. So you may even want to consider recycling your clay pots that have broken up on you. But anytime you're reusing containers, those types of things, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to clean them up, to sterilize them and sanitize them before you use them. And an example of that would be the dust in the soil. There may be salt, insect, disease problems. And we just had an interesting case on some of our transplants for the fall garden. We had some broccoli that we set out to harden off before we planted them one weekend. We came back on Monday, they were completely defoliated from the uh, cabbage worm or cabbage looper and after they defoliated it they were so hungry they were ready for the uh, winter hybrid hybridization and so we uh, found some of the pupa here that had already made the cocoons and if you don't clean those up, what's going to happen is next year those are going to come out. You're going to have the adults right there. So they're uh, going to spend the winter right on your containers that you're going to use for next year. So you have to be very careful, inspect things that you're going to reuse and get them to clean up. Even things like uh, tomato cages and some of your stakes, if you use T-posts or wooden stakes, you'd be surprised how spider mites can find cracks and crevices, diseases can overwinter. It's not uncommon to have plant material even that have dried up and hang on them. So cleaning those up is very important. And one way that you may want to do that, you've seen us talk a lot about using uh, Clorox solution and a 10% solution as a sterilant to clean things up. You can also buy commercial products that are out on the market, which we use some of those around here to clean pots that also work as a, a fungicide to keep diseases from reoccurring too. But something like this, you're probably wondering, how would you ever clean it? Well, you can use a spray bottle, put your Clorox solution in, and then you can just make sure you spray all the way around to, to get good coverage on it. Another simple way, maybe, if you're one of the gardens that has a tendency to finish up your gardening season, say in August, just put them in a, an area that's maybe out of the way in full sun, and you can cover them with clear plastic and you can kind of solarize them, get it heated up enough that that will also kill any pest problems that maybe are going to try to overwinter for you. So there's a couple of options there. And when we talk about recycling in the garden, it's always interesting to see some of the new products that are coming out on the market. Now you've seen us talk a little bit before about the replacements for the styrofoam peanuts. These are some that are made from cornstarch and they look just like the styrofoam. The only difference is when they come in contact with moisture, they dissolve and you can see some floating in there that have already dissolved that I dropped in there. So that's a nice thing to have happen when you put those in a landfill. When they come in contact with moisture, they're gonna break down. Some other new things that I just learned about on one of our garden riders trips in San Francisco was some products by Novon that are made out of polymers, also cornstarch based. These are actually trash bags that will break down and dissolve just like the uh, 
peanuts will here. So if you put grass clippings or anything that you're keeping, compost, other things that you want to break down, these bags will also break down with them. Unlike some of the ones that are considered photodegradable, where with the sunlight, when they're covered in the landfill, they never break down, so that kind of defeats the purpose. Even silverware made out of the same thing that are being introduced in school systems, so you can actually have a lunch that the whole thing is compostable or compostable, and the silverware, the bag, and everything is going to break down, plus your paper products that you might use, so a real exciting area that's coming out on the market. Now something that's a little bit more novelty that we found showing up in some of the garden center are products called poo pets. And this is actually recycled uh, manure that comes from the farms of the Amish people in Pennsylvania and they contract out with a company that shapes them like different types of pets. This is a turtle and this is a stool toad. And the way you use these, you just set them like in a container plant or a house plant and as you water, they break down slow release and you get a little bit of fertilizer and it even has a fertilizer ratio right on the pot. So if you have a gardener that you need an interesting gift for, this may be the novelty one to choose for next year. Lastly, it's real exciting to see that pots are finally being made out of recycled paper or newspaper. You may see some of these showing up in your bedding plants next year. Now if you remember before we've had pots made out of peat that you can plant directly in the ground and they'll break down. But these are truly the first ones made out of recycled paper. The company tells us that the garden centers, when they get them, the last several weeks, and then when we take them home as consumers, we can plant them directly in the ground. If they're not broken down too much, I'd probably encourage you to go ahead and peel around the bottom so the roots can take off. Uh, maybe peel the whole thing off if it doesn't look like it's broken down enough and put it right in the compost pile. So there's lots of exciting things going on and I'm sure you probably have some recyclable tips that you could share with us here on the program that we could share with other viewers. So be sure and drop us a line if you've got any other great recycling ideas to share.